Hi, in this interview, I speak with Alison Thompson, who's the president and CEO of Borealis Geopower. Uh, we speak about geothermal energy's potential for Alberta and Canada, why she believes Canada has more renewable energy than we'll ever need, and the Upton Sinclair trick that Alberta has implemented to drive innovation in its energy sector. Enjoy. Greetings, hello, bonjour. I'm Alison Thompson of Borealis Geopower and a director of Kitsilis Geothermal. Well, hi, Alison. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'd like to begin by allowing you to introduce yourself. Uh, tell us about Borealis Geopower and what the company is focused on. Essentially, we find the heat beneath your feet. And uh, we're really passionate about what we do. And we, we really like our motto as well, that our impact goes you know, well beyond, um, uh, you know, deeper than, than drilling. And what we've been doing across Canada is de-risking geothermal reservoirs, but in markets that can actually afford the fuel switching, so economically viable. Uh, to do that, when you're kind of like first in the industry or, or a new industry, uh, you have to kind of find a, a permitting pathway as well as using innovation. And so you know, my background is, is oil and gas. Uh, we've also used a lot of mining techniques. And uh, it's actually really exciting and intellectually stimulating to kind of apply yourself to, to a different industry. Uh, we have projects in a small community called Vale Mount, British Columbia, and they have an air quality crisis and uh, they need a bold move to, to kind of overcome and, and move through how they're going to, to fix their airshed. And geothermal energy is, I think, going to be uh, one of their, their largest solutions. We're also working with Kitsilis First Nation on their traditional territory near Terrace. And uh, the really interesting thing about Terrace is it has a lot of industrial customers and industrial heat is one of the only things yet still not cracked by renewable energy. And so there's, there's a lot of enthusiasm for the, you know, what if or what could happen there. And of course we have consulting clients all across Canada who are becoming more aware and interested in the solutions that geothermal energy can provide. For those who might not be that familiar with uh, geothermal energy, can you describe in layman's terms, please, uh, what it is and what potential exists for it in Alberta in Canada and globally as well. Yeah, you'd be surprised at how uh, how really straightforward it is. It's actually energy that that's uh, kind of tapped in Earth's center, and you know, as as it emits or emanates this heat outwards, it rises uh, towards the surface. In in some cases, it can go all the way to the surface and become a hot spring. And there's you know many people who visited hot springs, uh, you know, enjoy bathing in them, you know, or at least are familiar with that concept. But otherwise, if the heat doesn't rise all the way to the surface, it can get trapped in reservoirs. Reservoirs. And uh, a, a reservoir, uh, much like the way oil and gas can get trapped. And when that heat is trapped in a reservoir, you can drill into it. And by drilling into it, bringing it to the surface and using it uh, and bringing that water back down to the reservoir, because the heat's always coming up. So if you return that, that water or brine to the reservoir, it will heat up again and you can use it again. And that's what makes it renewable. You are somebody who has a background and you've come out of the oil and gas industry, the fossil fuel industry, and now you're in the renewable energy uh, side of the uh, energy sector. Um, how would you describe Alberta's strengths in energy and specifically in renewable energy? Uh, what do you think Alberta is really strong in in that department? This is also a, a really great answer because um, my husband has a phrase, he calls it the embarrassment of riches. And it just so happens that Alberta has this amazing backup plan that uh, I don't think people realize like the world-class solar, the world-class wind, uh, you know, with our very tall mountains, the pumped storage capabilities. There's even uh, the possibility for large dams in the north. Uh, and of course, geothermal, you know, the heat beneath our feet. Uh, we actually have so much of it. And so uh, I, I often encourage people to do a thought experiment and, uh, you know, there's sort of like a, like a trick here. Um, yes, we have hydrocarbons and I'm not going to tell you not to use them in the thought experiment. I want you to choose to not use them. So when we like a board game that we're going to choose to not use that, that resource, you look around, what do you have? Well, we just talked about, you know, solar and wind and geothermal and hydro. 
and um, and it's local and it's diversified and it's not emitting and it, it's again embarrassment of riches. It's so abundant in Alberta and in Canada. You actually have more energy than you need, and so you start to create your uh, your economy and grow your GDP without growing emissions. And you've got that going. And now you go back to your thought experiment and you release, you relax. Uh, the, the restriction on, on using hydrocarbons. And now you're going to use hydrocarbons, but you're going to use them in a non-emitting way. So maybe you're making hydrogen, maybe you're making plastics. Um, they're, they're wonderful building blocks of, of our economy and society, but they can be used differently. Coincidentally, you know, geology, uh, geographically, we, we have it all here. And, and that's why this transition doesn't have to be painful. You know, it can be euphoric. Well, you brought forward the, the expression, the embarrassment of riches. I'll put one forward, which is uh, necessity is the mother of innovation. Um, how do you square those two in terms of Alberta and its, uh, its capacity uh, to, to innovate in terms of energy? Do those two uh, align in your, in your perspective? Alberta really is well positioned. I, there, there's a neat little trick that they've done that I, I especially appreciate and want to call out. And so we have the large emitters who pay a fee for their carbon emissions. And, um, and so that pot of money uh, goes into the government. And I want to bring up the, uh, the famous Upton Sinclair quote about, you know, it's really difficult to get a person to do something differently when their salary depends upon them not doing something differently or not, not understanding it. And so what Alberta has done is this pot of money doesn't go into the energy ministry. The pot of money goes into the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade and and, and Tourism. And and so Alberta Innovate sits in this economic development and and trade. And and so what you have is you don't have that Upton Sinclair tension of of somebody kind of maintaining the status quo of of energy. Uh, You've got this other other group, and, and, and that's what I really find I love that word development because for me, intrinsically development means building something new, you know, doing something different. And and so you you have this situation in Alberta, and I I think that's really neat that they have, uh, you know, intentionally separated, uh, you know, where the the innovation funding comes from and then how it's used and administered. And and the people making those choices are, are different people. So you don't have to... Uh, you know, be in that paradigm of, of, of what Upton Sinclair described. So I'd like to give you uh, an opportunity to pitch someone or a group uh, in a position of power in Canada. Uh, and the pitch is geared towards making Canada a global leader in geothermal energy. Uh, so I want to ask, who would you pitch and what would you urge them to do now to make that happen? I might have a, a slightly different answer than than many people would expect because I'm not going to say a politician or or the people. I, I'm actually going to target uh, the bureaucrats, the public servants. Uh, I I really urge those public servants uh, to really kind of embrace the the serving the public in ways that they ask of you today and tomorrow. Uh, your politicians may be even on board with with an energy transition, but but, but you, public servant, are kind of acting as, as the incumbent and kind of maintaining a status quo that, that I think is holding us back. And I, I think a lot of people um, don't actually intend, they don't get up in the morning to hold you back, but they kind of think that they're protecting companies by, uh, by gearing them towards energy transition or, or even some of the energy workers who take to social media late at night or, or, or to the streets. Um, I think they think they're actually helping their companies, but, but their companies and their leadership have, have long been okay with the change and, and with, uh, with using different technology and innovation and, and with those carbon price signals.